This episode of Relativity is made possible through the support of Stephen and Catherine Farris, Ryan Farwell, Bill Cariola, and Michael W. McClure. And by listeners like you who support us through Patreon. Learn how you can support this series and get exclusive content by visiting patreon.com slash relativity. Get even more information about relativity at relativitypodcast.com. Relativity. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I see it. It is floating about three meters away and slowly drifting. Away from you? Of course. Chris, you may have to let it go. Negative. That pouch was ejected from the suit of the person who sabotaged this ship. I'm going to analyze its contents and get the DNA signature of the person who killed all my friends. I understand that, but if that pouch is out of your reach, then you will have to let it go. No, Sophia, the, the, the toolkit, my robot friend. I've been hanging here watching it flit around like a hummingbird. Can't I grab onto it and then detach myself from the ship? No! And push off toward the pouch, grab it, and then you tell the robot to fire its little engine back toward the ship. It was not designed to tow a human passenger. But could it do it? Could it take me the few meters away from the ship and then back again? Theoretically, yes, but... Then I'm doing it. Just be ready to start the thing's engine when I tell you. Are you insane? I gotta have that pouch, Sophia. You got a better suggestion about how to get it? Let us try to get a fix on the pouch with the robot scanner and then send the robot out. I can see it. I know exactly where it is. I have a good grip on the robot and I am releasing the cable that holds me to the ship. Do not release that cable. Repeat, do not release that cable. Relativity. Episode 23 in which an old-fashioned remedy is prescribed. Listen to me. I have our robotic specialist here. The data line is clear. Let us do this for you. I'm listening. Talk fast. We will send the robot after the pouch. By itself. You know it can retrieve the pouch safely, and you know we can bring the robot back to the ship afterward. Okay, yes, try. If it doesn't work, maybe there's still time for me to go out and get it. That will not be necessary. Do you have a clear fix? I'm pointing the robot the side of the scanner toward the pouch. That's helpful. Thank you. Now let go of it, okay? Have you let it go? I'm letting go. Very good. I want every eye on this. It's not moving. Scan is still indeterminate. I can see the pouch. It's right there, drifting away. It should only take a moment. It's drifting away. Contact signal. It's detected something. Yeah? Affirmative. We're sending the instructions now. Tell it to go slow and easy. Absolutely. It's moving. Oh, it's creeping toward the pouch. You should deploy an arm as soon as it's within reach. Oh man, it's getting closer. Arm deployed? Not yet. Are you sure it no- oh, oh, hang on. Okay, there it is. One of the tentacle things. It's reaching out. We've told it to go slow. Thank you. Yes. Be careful, buddy. Don't bump it or- push it or anything. What are you seeing now? It's it's reaching around to the far side of the pouch. Okay, that's great. Just push it back toward me. We're going to secure the pouch and stow it in the toolbox. Okay, that's that's fine too. Yeah, that's that, that's that's better. Yeah, that would be Okay, it's got it. It's dragging the pouch toward the uh, toward the little door in its side. The door is sliding open and it's pushing the pouch inside. Yes. And the door is closed. Excellent. You did it. Tell everybody there they did it. I think they know. And the robot is moving again toward me. When it's in range, reattach your free cable to the robot. Then we'll begin the climb back into the airlock. Oh, I need to tow it back inside? If it's not too much trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. I, I just wondered why you don't send it flying to the airlock ahead of me now that I know how well it flies. The robot's propulsion system is meant for short distances and low inertia. That's why we didn't send it out ahead of you in the first place. And also why it can't be trusted to tow a human being around space. Uh, I I was starting to wonder if you didn't didn't just make me do this whole terrifying thing just to keep an eye on the robot that was really going to do all the work. We wanted your human perception of this situation close up and in person. We certainly would not have put you in such extreme risk without a good reason. Okay... Keeping you safe is difficult enough as it is. You're really mad at me, aren't you? We won't discuss that at this time. Come on, I've got nothing but time. I'm latching onto the robot, 
And I'm going to start climbing back to the airlock. I can do two things at once. That is apparently true, because you were simultaneously terrified of becoming disconnected from the ship, and then you insisted on disconnecting from the ship. I had to have the waste pouch. You could have died. I could have lost the pouch. And that would be worse than getting whisked away from the ship and into deep space? My whole crew is missing, apparently dead, and we just learned that it was all the work of one person who climbed all the way out here and planted some kind of explosive device in the prow of the ship. I know all of that. And that was always going to be a mystery for the rest of my life. I was going to have to wonder who did this thing, and now, by a one in a million chance, we found a trace of that person, some of their jettisoned pee and poop, and that means I can analyze it and I learn... I know what it means! So yes, I was willing to risk my life to get the one and only hope I will ever have for finding out what the hell happened the day my whole life was destroyed. Can you not understand that? I understand that you and I agreed to work together, and that meant you would follow direct orders from Mission Control. Well... Did we not have that agreement? Yes, but look... No! That is not something to argue with. Either you do it or you don't. Remote orders... Even those as well-informed as yours cannot possibly meet every emergency out here. Sometimes I'm going to have to act on my own initiative and judgment. We actually give you extraordinary liberty for your own judgment and action. Really? Yes! And that's fine as long as you aren't launching yourself into space or some other self-destructive course of action. Yeah, well, sometimes that's going to happen. Well, it can't. Well, it's going to. Pain. Literal? Pain? Physical? Yes. And I have tried to push through it to just keep soldiering on. Oh, Sophia, for God's sake, why didn't you say so? I'm supposed to be... Such things are not supposed to get to me. <sighs> well, that's ridiculous. What? What's happened? Are you hurt? Are you ill? It's just a headache. Well, if it's pain that even you complain of, it must be some hellacious headache. What what have you taken for it? I went outside to get some fresh air. Okay, good. Uh, uh, do you have high blood pressure or anemia? What? No. Are you allergic to naproxen? No. Well, then what you need is good old ibuprofen. It's still the best thing for a stress and tension headache. Are you my doctor now? Yes. Yes, I am, and I'm telling you to get 200 milligrams of ibuprofen into your bloodstream before you do anything else. You can't tell me what dosage to take. Unless you weigh less than 20 kilos, and I don't think you do, that's a safe dose to start with. Now, I'm sure you have some ibuprofen around there somewhere. Go. Sometime when my head isn't exploding, we will discuss the matter of which of us gets to tell the other one what to do. I look forward to it. Estimate your distance from the airlock. 100 meters. Probably take me 10, 15 minutes. Are you getting that ibuprofen? Affirmative. Contact us when you reach the airlock. Mission Control out. Stubbornest human being alive. Mission Control to Konyechny. Konyechny, aye. Is this, is this Marcus? Affirmative. The flight director instructed me to monitor your progress. She doesn't trust me. She's concerned about you and wants to make sure you're okay. Yeah, I get that. I know I'm the source of her headache. It must be pretty bad if it made her take another break. And that's what I was thinking. Have you observed any other any other symptoms? Anything to suggest she has any further issues? Uh, physical? Mental? Well... I can't say I like the sound of that. I better let her tell you the details. But there's definitely something unusual going on. Okay. I'll just try to figure out what to do with that. Well, she's upset about something. I don't think she'd want me to talk about it when she's not here. Is, is this about her sister? Has, has her condition changed? No, no, this is something new. Wow, okay. Well, I've got something new here too, and I should report it to somebody. Marcus, you're one of the tech geniuses there, right? You, you know all about how things get built and how they work. I'm not going to say I know everything. Oh, well, fair enough. But when I, when I looked out into space a few minutes ago, I saw shapes that were... Geometrical. Okay. Well, nothing in nature is a perfect geometric solid, right? Lots of things. Stars, planets. A sphere is a geometric solid. Okay, don't be a smart aleck. You know, I mean things like cubes or pyramids or diamonds. Well, crystals can form into those shapes. 
Right? Oh, true. Yeah, okay. Good point. Yeah, they can indeed. I've seen it. I, I've seen a virus form a perfect cube. But you saw a pyramid floating in space? Yeah, I thought I did. Or a dodecahedron or something. Yeah, I, I can't explain that. Oh, well, I just thought I'd ask and I... I bet I'm right in guessing that you and I are both really thinking about Sophia right now. Roger that, sir. I like to go offline and see how she's feeling. I won't tell a soul, but I will squawk loud when I get to the airlock. Thank you, Doctor. Mission Control out. It has to be a maximum number of mysteries that one person can hold in their head at any given time. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, hey, log recorder, are you getting this? Recording. Yes. Christopher. Captain. Deepa. Where are you? Christopher. I can hear you. Deepa. Where are you? You must remain connected. What? You must remain connected. What does that mean? Relativity, episode 23, in which an old-fashioned remedy is prescribed, starred Alana Jordan and Lee Shackelford, who also wrote the script. Also heard in this episode was Clarence Brown as Marcus. Find out much more about the series, including ways you can subscribe, hear past episodes, like us on social media, and how you can get exclusive content, all on our website at relativitypodcast.com. Hello, Felicity.